but like I said, I was around 12 years old, and, um, and after school, um, there was, um, in my school, after, an after school program uh, of the North End Dance Troupe, and, um, you know, I, I joined it, actually. And um, the, the nice thing about, you know, uh, the North End Dance Troupe was um, they started training us in a, in a lot of different a lot of different things, but they also got a grant, um, you know, to bring in other teachers um, from around the area and, and things like that. One um, was Connecticut Dance Theater came in and they were teaching classes and, um, and then Hartford Ballet came in and they taught a couple of things. But one of the highlights of it was um, the grant allowed for Dance Theater of Harlem to come in and, okay. and teach wow. us. And um, Carl Shook came and he started, you know, he would come in, I would say, um, over the weekend, um, like over the weekend, uh, every other month or so. And, um, and that was, that was wonderful. We also, you know, some of the dancers, uh, taught class like Gail McKinney and, oh, um, Keith Saunders would come in. And so <clears throat> Arthur, um, it, Arthur wasn't wasn't a part of that. Mm -hmm. Arthur said, Mitchell. Yeah. Right, he's the director, but Carl Schuch, um gave us, hand-selected some of us, you know, and, and gave us scholarships uh, to attend, you know, Dance Theatre of Harlem School for the summer. And, um, and that's, that's pretty much, you know, how it started. Mm -hmm. So, my foray into, <laughs> into SFB, um, School, of American um, School of American Ballet and my friends there and my, um, my friends at Harvard Ballet, we were all, you know, going to audition for um, San Francisco Ballet School. Now, um, around that time, San Francisco Ballet and San Francisco Ballet School had become um, the, the big SAB mm -hmm. of the West Coast. You know, it was, it was the place to go, it was the place to be. Um, you know, the, the city ballet students were going back and forth, you mm -hmm. know, it was, it was kind of like that. So, um, so we had decided, you know, my friends and I said, well, we're gonna, you know, audition for San Francisco Ballet School, you know, and, and for the summer. And I remember it being um, a really big deal because actually it was my, it was really my first big, my first big audition. Because with School of American Ballet, I was from Connecticut, I was from Hartford, Connecticut, mm -hmm. so I really didn't do a big cattle call mm -hmm. um, for SAB. I would, you could call, at that time, you could call um, School of American Ballet and make an appointment and come in and take their audition classes okay. that were at the studio. So that's generally what I did for them. But for SFB, that was a little bit different. <laughs> Um, for my age group, I remember there being at least over 500 kids in that, you know, dancers in that audition, and plus wow. my friends were in the audition with me. So, and it was a cut audition. So, and you know, so which not, means what? Which means well, a cut audition means they eliminate you. Okay. As the audition is going okay. on, so you know. Wow. Um, you know, some you know some schools and some companies back in those days would have a body cut, you know, um, which would be you walk across the floor, and if you you know weren't physically what they were looking for, they would just eliminate you right without there without even dancing. Without That's even how you dancing. Look. Mm -hmm. oh, interesting. But SFB didn't really have that, but it was still a, an elimination audition, and um, I remember <clears throat> um, just being just being <laughs> uh, Lisa. It was just really a big deal. Like yeah. you know, it was. You know, it, I, and I, I also want to say, just like with School of American Ballet, not getting into School of, of American Ballet had the potential to ruin your career. Um, not getting cut from San Francisco Ballet School in that sense was had the same had the same potential. Yeah. Um, but you know, um, I I got to you know I got to the end of the audition and. Um, you know, Richard Kamek, who was the school director at the time, he gave the, the announcement about, you know, what to expect in San Francisco. And, um, you know, um, I got a, a scholarship. And, and, and just, to, um, just to backtrack a little bit, 
most of my training, I had always been on scholarship. You know, my, my, mm -hmm. you know, at Harvard Ballet School, I was on scholarship. At the Institute of Harlem, I was on scholarship. And School of American Ballet, I was on scholarship. So San Francisco um, was the same thing. Um, and I was offered also um, a stipend to help with living expenses and, and things like that too. So, so I was pretty excited yeah. you know, about, oh, definitely. about that. And um, off I went. I did some very nice things there. As, as a matter of fact, one of the highlights of my career there, um, we, we ended up, we, we did a joint performance with Alvin Ailey. Oh, wow. And um, we were doing, we would, what we were going to do with them um, together, um, State, State Ballet Missouri and Alvin Ailey, what we were going to do together was a ballet um, a piece called Memoria. And that was going piece that we did together. But, but I also was dancing the river, which is another Alvin Ailey. Um, ballet. Yes. Well, um, of course, there, there came that period where um, the two companies had to come together, um, especially to rehearse Memoria. And um, I remember Alvin came. And, uh, and um, I remember just being really awed, you know, by, by that experience. And of course, you know, the great Desmond Richardson, um, that was the first time I had seen him, and I just thought, Phenomenal, yeah. you know, and, and the fact, I mean, that kind of technique, and of course, you know, he went on to ABT yes. as a principal, and it was just, just wonderful. But I remember just that whole, just that whole environment of our two, our two groups, different, but together, mm -hmm. um, was wonderful. And, um, and, and we were all, and as like I was saying, we were doing the river at the time. And I remember Alvin came to one of the rehearsals, and I just remember being so nervous about it. <laughs> uh, you know, because there's him, and you know he's sitting in the middle, and there's Todd on this side, and there's Una on this side, and their ballet master on that side. Uh, so it was a very intimidating mm -hmm. envi <laughs> environment, but um, but it was a great experience, mm -hmm. you know, um, and you know getting to meet you know, um, and talk to some of their company members and just, you know, talk a little bit about how things were, were for them. And of course, they were asking me, like, well, how, things, how are things here for you? And especially being African-American mm -hmm. and a predominantly white company. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, we kind of talked about those differences. Um, but that was the last, um, because the year after that was when Al um, Alvin passed. Oh, so, okay. um, you know, I felt, um, I felt very fortunate yeah. at had, having had the experience of um, doing in two Alvin Ailey pieces yeah. um, there. You know, um, I felt that uh, her classes were tough. You know, there's, there's, there's no way about it, you know what I mean, like, and I felt um, after, after her class, and, and, if, and if I remember correctly, and someone may want to correct me <laughs> that sees this, um, I, if I remember correctly, she taught on Fridays, and, um, you know, and you just kind of had to be, be ready for it, you know, that, that you knew that the class was going to be tough, you knew the class was going to be difficult. But the great thing about it was that you were ready for the rest of your day uh -huh. you know, from, from Patricia's classes. You know, they were, um, Patricia's classes were about strength um, and they were about technique, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? And you really, you really needed to know what you were doing. Mm -hmm. you know, Pat would come around and, 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 and when she wasn't rehearsing, um, the principals and the soloists, and, you know, that she would come to other rehearsals and mm -hmm. watch. Um, so I remember when we were rehearsing um, the Mighty Casey, and I wasn't I wasn't really ever into sports or <laughs> or anything like that. And Pat was sitting there, and that this and this was this was the period where um, I was um, dancing. I'd taken over the role of George Barrows from you know, from Jeff, and so I had to I had to hit you know I had to you know, I had to hit the ball. 
Um, and um, so I'm standing there, and Pat's looking at me, and she's like, Gerard, no, no, that's not, no, that, that's not right. She actually, she literally got up. <laughs> and she went over and she fixed me. And she said, this is how you hold the baseball bat. <laughs> and, and, you know, and, I mean, you know, it was funny. Like, the whole company just, like, laughed. Like, like Patricia Wilde, artistic director mm -hmm. of Pittsburgh Ballet Theater, I had to show Gerard how to play baseball. <laughs> so that, you know, that, that, um, that I got to, you know, we all, we all got a kick out of. I would probably say if I had to pick, <laughs> if you pinned me down and you had to say, Gerard, pick your favorite ballet that you danced here at PBT in your time here, it would have to be Elite Syncopations. Oh, really? Oh, yes, Elite okay. Syncopations is my absolute favorite for and many, many, on many levels. Um, one, you know, uh, Sir Kenneth McMillan Ballet from mm -hmm. Royal Ballet. So the opportunity, you know, to really be in that kind of a, a ballet. Mm -hmm. you know. um, the look of it, it's all in, um, it's all in these crazy painted um, unitards um, with hats <laughs> and different, you know, funky uh, different hats. Um, but it's, um, it's a, um, a dance hall uh, is, is what it is. So um, the whole Benedim stage was a dance hall and they had removed the wings and everything. Oh, and the musicians were in the back. So we were on stage here with, you know, with them um, behind us. And, um, you know, I mean, um, I, had, I had the opportunity to um, dance what was um, Wayne Engling's part. Um, so um, that, was, that, was, that was very exciting for me. But, you know, the whole ballet was, was very fast and mm -hmm. very contemporary. And, um, you know, it was not that, you know, not that the other ballets, the Balanchine ballets, you know, like Allegro and Square Dance mm -hmm. and those ballets that I danced here, not that those didn't fit me, but I felt that elite syncopations fit me. That was true. yeah. <laughs> you know, it really... A bigger connection to who you were as a yeah, dancer, yeah. your style, and yeah. yeah. And I got the opportunity, we did that, we did that, we did at least single places twice while I was here. Um, and I, you know, and, and, and I really, I really enjoyed it. Um, Who know. did you enjoy dancing with the most, as a partner or as, you know, in, in productions? Who were? Well, <clears throat> well, we, we, you know, we often had, you know, when you're, when you're doing the core work and stuff like that, you had different partners mm -hmm. and stuff like that. Um, so, um, I was often partnered with Desiree Mastriano. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, for, um, for The Great Gatsby, which Bruce Wells choreographed and redid um, for, um, for us. Um, I, was, I was partnered with Elizabeth Mackin. Um, okay. And I remember when we did, when we, when we did um, ter before Terry Orr became the artistic director here, he came a couple of times, one to set Fall River Legend, and then the next time he came was to set Rodeo. And um, I believe it was Fall, either Fall River Legend that I, I performed, my partner was Alexandra Costrinos. And then at one point, um, and, at, and at one point, you know, I'm smiling because I'm, I'm sure um, I'm sure she will remember this. Um, Bruce Wells did a ballet called Rossini Variations, um, and I got to dance that. And Aaron Holleran, who oh, clearly right. was one yeah. of PBT's ballerinas here yes. for 20 years, yes. um, was my partner for that, mm -hmm. and, oh. and and we had fun. With My dad was a was a jazz musician, um, and um, he played tenor tenor saxophone. Um, my grandfather, my my grandfather, um, was one of Pittsburgh's um, f first, you know, ja um, jazz violinist. And so my dad, um, you know, my dad kind of came up, you know, under that being a musician. And of course, my my great uncles, my my grandfather's brothers. 
they were also musicians. So my dad um, left Pittsburgh early, um, somewhere around the age of 16 or 17, and he went on the road with my great uncles. Um, and they did things, um, you know, it, it's, it's really interesting. I didn't find out a lot about my dad and his career until later on in, his, in the last couple of years of his life when he had actually moved back here to Pittsburgh and I was taking care of him. Um, and I found out that, um, you know, him and, you know, him and my, um, my uncles, you know, they, um, they played in places in New York and um, they played in Atlantic City. And I, and I remember um, at this time, um, I was taking my dad and my aunt shopping or something. And somehow, <laughs> somehow the conversation, um, we were having a conversation about Lady Sings the Blues and mm -hmm. Diana Ross. Mm -hmm. and, um, and I remember saying something about, you know, Diana Ross and her interpretation of, you know, Billie Holiday. Mm -hmm. um, and my dad just offhandedly said, yeah, but, you know, but she wasn't, um, she said, Billie Holiday was a lot lighter than Diana Ross. And I just kind of looked at him and I said, what? I said, well, you know, how, did, how do you know, how do you know that? And he, you know, he just looked at me and he said, because me and your uncles backed her in Atlantic City. And I was just like, you did what? <laughs> but you never told me that. When he would come back to Pittsburgh, like after he had been off on, on his career and he would, early in his career, he would come back to Pittsburgh and stuff like that. Um, Wiley Avenue was a big jazz mm -hmm. scene there. And I remember him telling me that him and, and his brother George, my, my uncle, my dad's brother George was also an entertainer. He was a singer. And um, they, would, you know, they would do things together you know, at, at the clubs. But my dad, <laughs> my dad would say, yeah. And um, you know, we would come up on um, um, Duke Ellington's boys would you know, come into the club. And, and I guess they would have competition. Like a duel. <laughs> yeah, or, or wow. they would have, um, you know. And you know, my, you know, my dad was you know, he would make comments and say, you know, how, <laughs> he, you know, we weren't afraid of Duke Ellington's boys. We could play just as good as them. <laughs> you know, so there's that. He was very competitive mm -hmm. you know, in that way. And so was my, you know, so was my dad's brother. My time here at PBT has, has been one of my greatest memories and probably one of my biggest honors, mm -hmm. you know, and to be a part of, of um, PBT then and now um, is a great honor. You know, and I, I can't think of a bigger honor than to have um, myself um, and what I've done um, be connected you know, with the legacy that Pittsburgh Valley Theater is leaving.